Like, um, this video is shopping. Yeah, it's anyway, guys. so they're talking, regular volume, memes. it's a little bit loud. Actually, bro, this is actually really cool. So, look, this is the microphone outside the booth. This is the microphone inside the booth, the Sennheiser. So let's hear again, see where the levels are with the Sennheiser. And we're going to zoom in on this in a second. You know what that means. On the Stellar, in the booth, the levels are still below negative... <laughs> You know what it is. It's the Studio Bricks review. You've been looking for it, you found it. This is it, the official one. At least my official one. And if you're curious as to who I am, my name is Johnny Unitas. I'm a voice actor, I'm a voice actor, I'm a voice actor, and I'm also a voice actor, in case you were wondering. And why is that valid? Well, voice actors are probably one of the biggest customers of Studio Bricks, besides musicians, that is. So, if you're curious, as to whether you should buy a Studio Bricks booth, this is the video to watch. Stay tuned. So let's first talk about the need. As a voice actor or a musician, the main reason why you might want a Studio Bricks booth is to keep other sounds out of your recordings and to keep your sounds in an isolated place. I know for a fact I've made many sounds, anything from a dragon to a dying soldier. And in those cases, other people in my household don't always appreciate the sounds I make when I'm, well, dying because I want to keep their walking around my house, my dad's creaking chair, the laundry in the room next door out of my recordings, then uh, yeah, I need some sort of barrier. Now previously, I was recording in a booth made of moving blankets, a room divider, and a desk as well as a card table. Was it effective? Yeah, it kept the room reflections out, but it didn't keep any noises like airplanes, dog barking, the neighbor playing the so loud. None of those things were kept out of my recordings. So I knew I needed to level up my game. I knew I wanted to expand my horizons and what kind of work I could do. And if I was going to upgrade the level of work I was going to audition for, then I needed to upgrade my studio. So therefore enter some sort of vocal booth. I had to do a lot of research and in my research, I came across Demvox, I came across Whisper Rooms, of course. I looked at the vocal booths and I looked at Studio Bricks. So why did I choose Studio Bricks over the other options? Well, Studio Bricks has the easiest to construct format for a single individual. And I knew that the majority of the booth I'd have to construct myself. I was fortunate where a good friend of mine came over and helped me install it. And he helped me do the door, which is absolutely vital to have some assistance. The door by itself is over 100 pounds and just carrying 100 pounds of dead weight of metal and glass by itself is challenging. Trying to do that without damaging it and trying to keep it aligned while you're trying to put it in place and hold it at the same time while also pushing it from the left and holding it up. And it's a lot to do if you're just one single human being that can't clone themselves. But thankfully I had my friend Quan here and he was able to help me out. A full stream of that is on my Twitch stream in case you're wondering. I'm curious, why are you watching this video? Are you a voice actor? Are you a musician? Are you just a curious person? Are you a friend of mine that decided to stop by and say hi? If so, say hi in the comments below. I'll respond to your comments. I'm looking forward to seeing who watched the video. Anyway, back to the basics. Who is Studio Bricks? It's a company based out of Spain that makes audio reduction products. That's the best way I can put that. They've made booths designed for musicians and voice artists. They've also made booths for businesses. They even have like a phone booth designed just so that you can have a little bit of privacy. And the booths double as a scream room. <laughs> Honestly, the walls seem padded and you can just bump right into the wall <laughs> and be cool. <laughs> You'll be okay. If you need to just let loose, go in there, yell your frustrations away, you can do that. They also have a very pleasing aesthetic. And if you want to pay a little bit extra and wait a little bit longer, you can even get it in a custom color, which I thought about doing. I just, I'm an impatient guy. I didn't want to wait that long for it. You know what I mean? So if you're going to get a Studio Bricks booth, what you're going to want to do is purchase it in one way or another. The cheapest way would be to get it from someone who already has a Studio Bricks booth. There are many voice actors or voiceover artists that built 
built-in studios into their homes and they had a booth before and they're just like, yeah, I'll sell it and get rid of it or I'm moving and I can't take it with me. Here, I'll sell it at a discount. $1,000, $2,000 off of what I paid. That's a great way to save a lot of money, especially if you live near that person. The next way you can get it is buying it cash. Cash is king for a reason. Even though the booths like Studio Bricks or Whisper Room or Vocal Booth, they're all pretty expensive, several thousand dollars, many of them over $5,000 and more to buy them brand new. Cash is the best way to pay for them if you're gonna buy it new. You get the best deal. You don't have to worry about financing or interest or anything like that. So if you can save up the cash for it, preferably having done voiceover work or having done music or whatever you do, if you have the cash, use it. If you're like me and impatient, and you decide, I want the Studio Bricks booth, but you don't have the cash on hand, well, then you'll be left with the option to finance. And financing, unlike a car, is not on a variable interest rate. So um, if you pay extra payments early, it doesn't really save you any money. Your payment is split up and so is your interest. And therefore, it's basically saying you're guaranteed to pay this much extra for buying it this way you can't race the bank. That's going to be the most expensive way to purchase a booth like this. Do I recommend that for everybody? No. I don't think this is the right investment for a new voice actor or voice talent. It's better to build your tent <laughs> and work from there until you have the money. In the month and a half that I've had the booth, it's paid for itself. But I still had to pay extra because I financed it. <laughs> so had I waited a couple more months, yeah, maybe I would have been able to save up a little bit more and, and pay for it in cash. That would have been great. But you live and you learn, right? All right. So let's talk a little bit about my particular issues with financing this particular booth. I had decent credit. I had the money to go down. And I was opening a new line of credit for my business. Great. All good things. The problem was when my paperwork was filled out, whoever filed it or whatever, sent it to the wrong person or they filled it out the wrong way. So the bank wasn't going to pay until the booth arrived and the booth wasn't going to arrive until they got paid. So my delivery was delayed at no fault of my own. Probably was a little paperwork mix up. The problem was that delayed my delivery, which made me stress out. And it takes a lot to stress me out. But when you're taking thousands of dollars and just saying, hey, well, you might get it, you might not, we don't know when you're going to get it, then we might have a problem. That was a little bit stressful. Then after that got resolved and I had to refill out all the financing paperwork and get it submitted again, then we have the issue of transportation. Now, at first I thought I had to wait six to eight weeks because I believed that my booth was in Spain. But the lovely Genesis called me and said, hey, your booth is in New York. You can get one within the next two weeks. Awesome. Thanks. That's great. Or so I thought. The problem was the people that were supposed to contact me about the delivery didn't. And so the day that I was expecting to call, I didn't hear anything. The whole week goes by. Hey, hey, hey Genesis, where's my booth? Oh, you didn't get it called? We'll get in touch with you and make sure they contact you by Monday. Monday, I follow up. Still didn't get called. Hmm. So the head of the transportation, whoever he is, I don't want to mention any names because I don't want to make them feel bad. I'm only mentioning Genesis because she was awesome. The gentleman sends me an email and says, uh, your delivery was scheduled. Cool. When was anybody going to notify me that I was scheduled for delivery? <laughs> like I knew I was supposed to get a booth, but when is it coming? At what time? I need to be here. Now, granted, I wasn't going anywhere for Corona reasons, but in case I had plans, I needed to know where I needed to be and when. And I didn't find that out until the day before it was being delivered. That's a little scary. And then the day it got delivered, it was supposed to be here at 10 o'clock. Man calls me up. Hey, um, I didn't get my truck maintained, so I'm um, going to be late. He ended up coming around 4 in the afternoon, 3 or 4 in the afternoon. Okay, fine. Five, six hours late. I already waited three weeks for it. Whatever. It gets here. And the gentleman, even though he was late, was really helpful. I was excited. And then I started building it. And even though in the video online, you see someone disassemble it in five minutes or so, maybe even less, assembling it took me quite a bit longer. 
I was able to follow the instructions pretty well, but it took me a couple hours with the help of my friend Quan to put the booth together. Now, let's talk about the problems that we had. While building the booth, we found that we needed screws. There were some screws. However, they were star screws, which was something I was not familiar with, nor did I have a screwdriver for it. So the star screws that I needed to just hang the ventilation system on, I had to replace with regular screws that I happen to have because I have Phillips heads, no star screwdrivers in my house. The other thing that kind of was a little bit of a hiccup was on the, I believe the D layer, the top layer, there was a piece that was kind of narrow and it wasn't fitting quite right. It turned out that the piece was pressed too tight. So I had to take a smaller piece that would go in between all the other pieces and kind of wedge it in there and then widen the gap a bit so that it would fit where it belonged. I was a little concerned because I didn't want to break it. I've spent thousands of dollars and the last thing I need is to wait even more just for one piece to be replaced. So we were able to widen it and wedge that piece right on to where we wanted it to go. If you watch the live stream, you see at some point there was a point where both Quan and I held our weight up on that piece trying to get it in place and it was not budging. Which tells me the pieces were strong. And then as I stepped away two seconds to grab the next piece, it fell off and chipped the B layer. <laughs> well, either way, I do like the aesthetic. The white, clean, crisp look is awesome. I was tempted to get it in a sea moss green, but I just didn't feel like waiting extra just for a color of paint. Uh, but that's an option. They have a whole RAL list of colors. It even looks like hundreds of colors that you can choose from. So if you're one of those people that likes custom, I've even seen bright orange booths in people's homes. So that's an option. What else? Oh yeah, when you're buying a booth as a voice actor, there's options. You can get the regular Studio Bricks one, which is what I have, a three by four booth. That's all I needed. Uh, or you can get the one plus, or you can get something even bigger if you need. There's also the VO edition for voiceover, obviously. And the VO edition comes with a small little table inside, as well as some brackets to use, kind of shaped like that to use to hold your microphone and possibly your stand or your laptop or whatever monitor you're using to see your script. A lot of voice actors prefer that version because it comes with everything you need. Me, I had two mic stands and a small narrow table and a bunch of other stuff, so I didn't really need the VO edition. So I chose not to get it. Save myself, I wanna say 1800 bucks. So it was definitely worth it for me to not buy the VO edition, but for you, maybe you do want it. Maybe you want that pristine VO editions label. The other aspect of the voiceover edition is that it comes with extra padding inside. So the regular Studio Bricks booth has padding all around at about six feet high and drops to maybe two feet or so off the ground. And then it comes with a bass trap which is good for a musician or things like that. You need still a good amount of hard surfaces in there to bounce off of to keep an instrument's sound bright. But for a voice actor, you want it as sound absorbing as possible. So there's extra padding in the VO edition at the top and a little bit extra on the bottom as well. I don't remember if it comes with an extra bass trap, but I believe it comes with the one that I got as well. The only thing is things that come standard with the booth you do end up seeing an invoice for them as if they were paying extra. Now you can't take them out, or maybe you can, I've never tried, but it does look like you pay for the booth and then it looks like you pay for the ventilation system and then it looks like you pay for the base trap. If you don't need the ventilation system, which I do recommend you get, and if you don't need the base trap, see if they can remove those from your order, if that's what you wanna do. For anybody speaking in the booth, the bass trap is a necessity. I actually had four additional bass traps that I had in my room that I took out of my room and put into the booth. You might see them in some of my recordings. My voice resonates not just from my face and my head and my neck and my throat, but also my chest. And because of that, it's very, very bassy. And a small room like that amplifies the bass. So to cut that down, threw a couple extra bass traps in there, and that helps. Either way, I like the way it sounds in my recordings. 
Uh, matter of fact, I was doing the training course while I was getting the, the booth ordered. And I started the training course outside of the booth, same microphone, same interface. And then I recorded a demo in the booth during the training program. And my demo producer and the coach both recognized that the audio quality was vastly improved and they really appreciate it. And there was nothing wrong with my audio before, it sounded good, but just the quiet silence. Nothing like it. Plus, I'm able to keep the monitor in the booth, but the computer out of the booth. As little sound as possible in that booth is what you want. Just a couple quick tips. If you're going to be buying a uh, Studio Bricks, make sure you have help. Make sure that you have height. And if you are vertically challenged, make sure you get a stool. There was even a point where I myself at six foot three with absurdly long arms needed to stand on a stool to make sure I could see everything I needed to see, especially when we were installing the roof or installing the top layers on the D layer and putting the uh, wedges in between. So it's important to make sure that you can see everything you're doing and you're not flying blind. So what's it like actually being in the booth? Well, if you don't use your ventilation system, it can be hot. And if you're like me and you love singing in the booth while you edit your audio, then uh, you might have this result. Yeah, it got really hot in there. Now, granted, this was before I understood how to use the ventilation system. For the first month of owning the Studio Bricks booth, I was under the impression that um, the ventilation system didn't work. It was broken. They sent me some broken thing, but I'm not sending it back because I hate sending stuff back. Nope, it wasn't broken. I was stupid. See, we here in America, we have 120 watt voltage coming out of our outlets. In many parts in Europe, they have 220 volts going out of their outlets. So it's a different level. Now, granted, Studio Bricks gives us this nice, lovely thing here. They send these uh, power inverters, I think they're called, with every Studio Bricks purchase in the US. So if you're using the ventilation system, which uses 220 volts, it can plug right into this side, and then the back end plugs into your standard US 120 volts, right? Problem is, if you don't, select the input voltage like I did, mine came set at 240 volts. Well, that's double what's expecting. So old girl wasn't doing anything. And so therefore neither was my ventilation system. And then 24 hours ago, I realized maybe I should put it in the lowest setting, 110 volts, so that it can increase the voltage going out to the system. Well, that did the trick. The ventilation system kicked on full blast. Now it was pretty loud out here, but inside it really wasn't that loud at all. And I realized that if I needed to turn that on full blast with the Sennheiser, I would barely have to do any noise reduction, which is pretty cool. Now granted, if you're in a TLM 103 or if you're using a U87 or a ribbon microphone or something really sensitive, uh, you will need to turn that fan down. If you are using uh, the booth in a cold environment, you probably won't need to turn the fan on at all. However, I do notice that when I don't use that fan, which is every time except for today, that I would need to open the door in between recordings. Or sometimes I would just stay in the booth for an hour or two recording and then I'd come out and it'd be seven, eight, nine, 10, maybe even 12 degrees cooler outside than it was in the booth. So having the light, being a loud mouth person as I am and sitting there and breathing a bunch of hot air, yeah, it can get pretty toasty in there. Here's what I wanna clarify. Some people see the booth or the thing is like it and they see it as being soundproof. Most booths that you will assemble are not soundproof. Do they reduce outside noise? Absolutely. Are they resistant to reverberation? Yes. But are they soundproof? No. Soundproof implies that they prevent sound from entering. And that is not what these booths do. They can reduce the sound that gets in, but they're not airtight and they're not dead silent. I 
took a choice to put this booth in the quietest room in the house, which happens to be the room that I sleep in and live in and work in because I live where I work, but that's where it is. Is it convenient for me? Absolutely. My commute is about three steps, but if it wasn't in a quiet room, say perhaps the living room where people walk by, I would be hearing other people in my recordings. So it's something to keep in mind. Now granted, a small child playing on a tablet, probably not. Someone watching the NFL, I'll definitely hear that. So it's just something to keep in mind. There's holes in the top that allow air to be escaped and interchanged. And it's ventilated, but it's also covered with insulation, so it slows down the air from escaping. However, it's still open. And you, if you wanted to, could push the roof open. It's nothing keeping it closed. So it's not soundproof. Just be aware of that. It will not stop you from hearing maybe a jackhammer. Or if a plane flies immediately over your house, probably gonna hear it. If you live near a train station, you might hear it. So that's just something to be aware of when it comes to your expectations. Will it reduce lots of sound? Yeah, on average, even in the recordings that I have, which I might even insert here. Okay, so I wanna give you guys a quick sample of how the Studio Bricks works. Now, the sound we're using for this recording is gonna be specifically from my Sony ZV-1 camera, just so that the audio sounds the same regardless. I don't want it to be like, oh, well that was on this microphone and that was on this microphone, because we have this microphone right here, which is our Stellar X2, which is a great microphone and I love it, but the Stellar X2 is not in the booth. Inside the booth, we have our Sennheiser MKH416. Can you see her over there? She beautiful, ain't she? Yeah, I love that thing. Both of them sound great in the booth, but my point is I want you guys to hear just the difference if you're in the room. So the Sony's gonna act like your ears and you're gonna hear that. And then we'll switch back to the other audio quality. So right now the volume, it's like 43. So you're hearing regular <laughs> conversation. In the They're talking, and was... not important. Hamburger. Ooh, it's kind of loud. All right, so it's a little bit, a it's like about the volume we would watch TV on. Now, whoa. Now we're bringing the, we're in the booth. Now what I want you to do is just listen. We're gonna be quiet for about 10 seconds. And the door is closed, okay? Door's closed and locked. So let's give it 10 seconds. So you tell me, are you able to hear what's going on in the room? I know to my ear I can, but let's look at my microphone levels on the interface and see if that's what's being shown. So let's flip the script here. There's the interface. Actually, bro, this is actually really cool. So look, this is the microphone outside the booth. This is the microphone inside the booth, the Sennheiser. That's picking me up. This is picking up just what's going on outside. So outside, it's probably somewhere in the 30s or high 20s as far as volume compared to that microphone, which is a few feet away from the TV, which is about the distance that you would listen to the television at. So I'm gonna shut up for again, a couple more seconds. Now, even though I can hear it, the decibels are not loud enough to register in this microphone. Plus the Sennheiser MKH416 is a great off axis mic. So since the sound is not coming directly at the microphone, it's uh, basically saying, I don't hear it. It's doing a great job of reducing over 30 decibels of sound. With that sound, my room noise in the booth without the recording is definitely loud enough to be heard. Even in situations like this, uh, yes, it reduces the sound by probably about 40 decibels or so, which is awesome. I think on the website it says 36 or 38, depending on which booth you're using and what frequencies you're looking at. So it does a great job reducing the audio, but silencing it, no, that's not how it functions. Now, what are my recommendations if you are to buy one? Things to be aware of. Always keep water in the booth. The booth comes with a light, so you don't need to buy lights, but many people get creative and they get those little LEDs. I am not one of those people. <laughs> That's extra work. I don't like the extra work. <laughs> but what I do recommend is 
always having something comfortable. If you're going to be, if you voice act and you like to sit, make sure your chair is super comfortable. If you're going to stand like I do, then you're gonna want like a floor mat on the floor, like probably about an inch thick or maybe a half inch thick padding because although the floor is not hard, it's covered in carpet, it, it is hard on your feet over long periods of time. If you're an audiobook narrator like myself, then you're gonna to wanna to put maybe even shoes on just to make sure that your soles of your feet are protected and so that it can protect your posture, your spine, your back, your knees, all those beautiful joints that make you a beautiful person. So protect your body, get a floor mat or something like that to stand on. Last but not least, the price. I've alluded to it, but I haven't really mentioned the exact pricing. Well, it's because I think that they don't mention their pricing on their website deliberately because of their direct competition. So because I don't want to defy or rather put them in an uncomfortable position by allowing their competition to undercut them. I'm not going to talk about specific pricing, but what I can say is based on my research, all of the major booth producers are priced similarly. And in general, if you're going to look for an estimate, look upwards of $5,000 if you're buying it straight from them and you're getting a double walled booth. You might be able to find it less than five if you go on Craigslist and or you're connected to other voice actors that are selling theirs. Then you might be able to find it cheaper. But in general, you're gonna be spending upwards of $5,000 to get one of these. And this is the small one. So just be aware, save your pennies, budget for it. I guarantee that if you are industrious, it's gonna pay for itself. Let's pass some ratings, shall we? As far as my purchasing experience, I would say Genesis was great. And the gentleman who helped take the booth off the truck was awesome. Everything else about the sales experience wasn't really that pleasant. I didn't really know how much I would be spending until I basically had already agreed to buy it, which is not something I like. Now, I'm a person that once I've decided on a course of action, I've committed to that course of action. So I already knew I was going to buy it regardless of the price, as long as it wasn't $20,000. But it did end up being more than I had budgeted for initially, especially when I financed it. So just be aware that that can be the case and try to pay cash if you can. The financing experience was uncomfortable because of the mishaps with delays and the mishaps with who I would be paying and what I'd be paying. And then later on, I paid a fee that I didn't know I had paid. And then someone else had filled up paperwork and said that I hadn't paid a certain fee. And so someone was calling me for more money in addition to the down payment that I had made. So I was so confused that whole process, even though the people were nice, was very frustrating. It delayed my delivery and it made me confused as to who I was actually supposed to be paying. Oh, also, if you finance it, you also have to pay insurance on top of that because you don't own it completely, just as you would a home or a car. And even then you still have to pay insurance for those as well. So the money can stack up. And so I didn't care for the purchasing process. Um, if I felt it was very convoluted in the way it was set up and could have been done a little bit easier. So for my personal experience, I'm gonna rate a four out of 10. Wasn't complete hot trash, but a lot of the things that can go wrong went wrong and they weren't my fault. That's just what it is. As far as the building experience, much better. I would give it an eight out of 10. The instructions were clear. The video was helpful. The only problems I had were the star screws and that one piece that didn't want to fit, but we made it work. Other than that, I was able to use moving blankets to move the really heavy pieces that I couldn't move by myself. And when I got to the door, I had a friend help me. Other than that, it was pretty straightforward. So eight out of 10 for the building experience. Now for the working in the booth experience, I was gonna rate it lower, until I figured out how to work the ventilation system. So I boosted a point or two. 
My only issues with working in the booth, the smell. That's about it. I'm not sure if it's the glue or the paint that they use, but when you first assemble the booth, you're completely encased in a scent that smells artificial. And it reminds me of the smell of paint, but it doesn't have that toxicity. It just is almost pungent. And it's just being surrounded by chemicals. So I recommend leaving the door open after you've assembled it for a while. Don't run into it because that door's heavy and it won't budge. Or rather, it'll move, but it'll move you too. So keep the door open in an open, well-ventilated area. And then that way it allows the booth to air out. And any fumes that may come up from the adhesive or from the paint, those won't affect you as much. And just stay hydrated. Overall, the experience in the booth and the quality of the product that they delivered, I give it a 9 out of 10. So that leaves one last question. If I had a choice, would I do it all over again? Yeah, I probably would. Except this time, I'd pay cash. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. I'm going to create more content like this. Some will be reviews, some will be voiceover content. Some of it is just demos and commercials I do. If you're interested in that kind of stuff, if you're learning about voiceover or if you're another voice actor and you want to link up and collaborate, let me know. My socials are in the link tree below. And thank you for watching this video. I'll see you next time.